Hey there! Welcome to a special New Year's Eve DVD and Blu-ray update. Um, there's a few other things, like there's like three VHS tapes, and I'm actually going to start out with a few books, just to get those out of the way. Um, this is also a Christmas uh, update as well. Um, I meant to post it sometime on Christmas, but after Christmas, but I didn't really get around to doing that. But I thought, hey, New Year's Eve, might as well be a good time to do it. So anyway, it's the New Year's Eve edition of the DVD and Blu-ray update. Plus, some books. So let's start out with some books. Here we have uh, Rescue 911. As you can see, I tried to take the thing off, the little uh, barcode thing, but it's it's... A really shitty sticker so if I pulled it off even more it would make things look worse this is a reprint of the original hardcover um, uh, of the tie-in to the show I'm a big fan of this show I grew up watching the show this also has black and white photos from the show in it and pretty much what it is it's transcripts of hand-picked uh, stories from Net Rescue 911. In fact, there's also a foreword by William Shatner. There's a little introduction uh, by Arnold Shapiro, who is the executive producer for the show. And he says that, uh, yeah, there's 81 stories in this book that were selected by the Rescue 911 staff from more than 450 episodes that they have produced. So that's really cool. This is a great collector's item. I've been wanting to get this for a while. I, I remember, I've read this before because I checked it out from the library years ago, but I wanted to have my own copy, and um, I'm glad to have it. Now, I do wish that this show was available on streaming or blue DVD. That would be nice, but I guess I'm just going to have to settle for YouTube. Um, I'm going to say this. If you're a fan of something like Unsolved Mysteries, I think you probably will be able to get some enjoyment out of Rescue Number One. It's just not really a lot of unsolved stuff, but it's a lot. There's a lot of reenactments, and it's based on true life cases. This is reality TV, Rescue Number One. Then I got this Disaster Movies book, which I it's another book I remember reading when I was a kid. I checked it out from the library years ago. I like it. I know it has some bad reviews from people, but I think it's pretty fun. Uh, Steven Sh uh, Kyoto, uh, director of uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, he likes it. And so did Joe Dante. So, you know, that's, hey, I'll take their word for it. And also, if you're a fan of disaster movies, this is definitely one of the, a book to pick up. It's a fun one. I also got this. Uh, I wanted to get this because uh, I think I was reading like one of those Uncle John's bathroom reader things. And this had, uh, there was a, a couple selections from this book that I thought were interesting. So I wanted to get my get a copy of the book for myself. And yes, that is a, a bunch of people eating goldfish for some reason. And that's pretty much what it is. It's an amazing collection of goofy stuff that seemed like a good idea at the time. So this is actually a pretty entertaining book. I've been reading through it a little bit already. Then this is actually a really good deal. I got this for like 10 bucks used. World Gone Wild, a survivor's guide to post-apocalyptic movies. Now, if you're a fan of post-apocalyptic movies, I think this is definitely one of those books you should get your hands on. It has a foreword by Verne, who wrote the Seagalology. It's written by David J. Moore, who I believe wrote that action book, The Good, The Bad, and what is it? I don't think it's a good, bad, and ugly. But um, this one, like that one, it does have uh, full-color photographs, and I think it also has some interviews and stuff with some of the cast and crew for some of these films. Um, I don't... I haven't read it yet, so I can't really say everything about it, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here, though, um, and, yeah, it's pretty, it's a pretty big book, too, it's like, um, yeah, it's, there's a lot of pages to this one, there's at least 300 pages, over 300 pages long, as you can see, it's a pretty thick book, um, I'm surprised I got it for so cheap. So, and I did not know it was this thick of a book, but um, it was a good deal. So I picked it up uh, for a Christmas present myself. 
And then there's this, which I've been wanting to get this book since it came out last year, but I just never really got around to it. Um, it was a bit too pricey. But I got this as a Christmas present from my grandmother and my cousin, Ghostbusters, The Ultimate Visual History. Now, this is a great companion piece to uh, Making Ghostbusters, which I also have, which is an extremely rare book. But this has some really, really cool photos in it. There, it's just chock full of those. And something fell out. It's like a little ad for... Uh, it's not much. It was just an ad for, you know... And this is like, it's got these special sort of things in it. As you can see, that Stay Puft Marshmallow Man thing. So there's a lot of stuff in here that makes it an interactive book in a lot of ways, which is kind of, which is really cool. I'm going to try to find the one that has like the, so they have stuff for Ghostbusters 2 and Ghostbusters. There's a, a lot of really rare, cool photographs in here. Um, this is definitely a must own for fans of Ghostbusters of the franchise because it, it's it really is a great book. Um, there's just so much in here. For example, this is what I mean by it, it's a it's a special sort of interactive thing. You see that? Well, what that is is it, it, it it's something that you lift up. See? It, it, it's there's a bunch of this stuff there are these these little extra sort of things that this book has that it comes with so I'm um, like a preview card here for the for the people who came in and saw the first movie so yeah there's a lot of stuff um, maybe one day down the road I might do a more in-depth review of this book but for right now um, yeah just thought I'd show up real quick I'm really glad to have this. this is a great gift. Um, as you know, I'm a huge fan of Ghostbusters, so it was definitely something I definitely was really, really thankful for. Um, now we get now we're getting to the update. Now, forgive me, there might be some doubles and stuff, and you might hear some popping and banging outside because people are lighting off fireworks. Um, but anyway, let's just get started, shall we? I'm just gonna grab a stack here. I'm just going to show it. We got the Devil's Nuts. Uh, these are all uh, DVDs and Blu-rays that I got uh, pretty much, I, I think, this month. And there's a few of them that I got, you know, as Christmas gifts a little bit later. But anyway, so we have the Devil's Knot, which is based on the true story of the West Memphis Three. Uh, that the documentary, oh man, I, I know, I, I did a video about it, and it's just completely left my brain what the title of it was. I'll probably remember it later. There's a whole trilogy of them. It's a really great documentary, but so I was really curious about the movie, which is based on the case. I haven't seen it yet, but um, I did pick up the DVD, though, for pretty cheap. It starts Colin Firth and Reese Witherspoon. This is a film that I've been wanting to see and add to my collection for a while because I saw the trailer for it. It looked interesting. You got William H. Macy, Laura Dern. Um, takes place uh, during the 40s. Uh, this is one of the last Dario Argento DVDs. I pretty much need to complete my collection. This is an eye for horror. This is a documentary that I remember seeing on Bravo years ago. In fact, this is my first introduction to Dario Argento, so I'm really glad to have this on DVD. This is kind of the second documentary about Dario uh, next to World of Horror. Now, um, the only ever Dario Argento DVDs I, or movies I can think of that I want to get is, well, not really movies. Well, there's like an Italian like war film he did that I'm not really interested in because it's a period piece, but Doors into Darkness is like the last thing. That's the last Argento-related thing that I, I honestly want to complete the collection. So I was glad to get this, though. Just one step closer to completing my Argento collection. Fatal Attraction, Special Collector's Edition. Uh, I got it for cheap because, you know, it's got a decent amount of features on it. Also, this uses the original home video cover art. Looper. Because I've heard good things about it, but I haven't seen it yet. The Tripper. Thought it looked interesting, and it was like it was cheap. 
Here we have Scarecrows. That's the DVD, not the Blu-ray, but I'm okay with that. It's still the unrated version, and I haven't seen the film, so I don't really want to pay extra for the Blu-ray. Sometimes I come back. This is the Trimark release, so it's a full screen. It's not the widescreen release, but it was a good deal, and I wanted to get my hands on this because I like that film. I think it's definitely one of the better Stephen King adaptations. And the sequels are surprisingly good as well. Here we have some bootlegs that I got for cheap. They're like five or twenty-five from this guy in line. Um, some of the, a lot of these are bootlegs, and the, that's because they're not available officially anywhere. Like Clive Barker's A to Z of Horror, or The Incredibly Strange Film Show, hosted by Jonathan Ross. Which are, I, I remember, I first remember seeing this on YouTube, and I always wanted to get my hands on the show in some sort of form because I was a big fan of it. It was really interesting and fun. Uh, this this is a pretty short-lived uh, show. There's like only about like 12 episodes or something total, and uh, it was hosted by Jonathan Ross, and I think it aired on BBC. And he interviews John Waters, Ray Dennis Steckler, Herschel Gordon Lewis, Ted V. Michaels, Russ Meyer, Sam Raimi. Pretty much what these are, it's it's exploitation. It's a all it's a history of alternative 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 uh, exploitation sort of cinema. And there's like rare behind the scenes footage and stuff. And there's all kinds of crazy things. And yeah, it's 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 a really fun show. Uh, if you're into these type of into this type of thing, then there's Son of the Incredibly Strange Film Show, which is a sequel, and this one has uh, episodes that center around Jackie Chan, Fred Olin Ray, and Doris Wishman, The Legend of El Santo, Ed Wood Jr., Tasui Hark, and Stuart Gordon, George A. Romero, and Tom Savini, which is a great finale for the show. Um, and I don't think I've even seen that one, so I'm really looking forward to that. This one, I am so glad I have, finally. Stephen King's This is Horror. Now, this is... I would like to get the extremely rare Laserdisc set, which is known as the Encyclopedia of Horror, and uh, because it probably has the best quality for for this show. I don't know when where this show aired, but I remember seeing a VHS of this years ago, and I loved it. Because there's a lot of rare behind-the-scenes uh, footage from this show. Stephen King is interviewed talking about his talking about certain genres of horror and certain things. And there's nice behind-the-scenes footage with K and B, you know, and, and Steve Johnson and a bunch of other things. Uh, yeah, if you're a big fan of like horror, you definitely need to track this down. Either get this bootleg set. Or watch some of the episodes of it that are still on YouTube. Now, I also got this because it was, you. I think it was like you buy five, you get two free. And this one, these are the two ones I got for free Blood Salvage, which is a film I reviewed years ago and I, I did like. So I'm glad to actually have it on somewhat on DVD. And honestly, this guy did a great job with these custom covers and everything. And then Rawhead Rex. This is the artisan release. It's not the actual, of course, it's still a bootleg. It's just a DVD-R. But um, it's exactly the same as the artisan release, which is out of print. So I'm glad to have those. Glad to have all of these, actually. Um, Doom. Frank Herbert's Dune, the, the uh, Sci-Fi Channel miniseries. I saw this a long time ago. I remember not being the biggest fan of it, but I, I got it because I'd honestly been looking for it for a while because I'm a huge fan of David Lynch's Dune. So I thought it would be a good thing to have to contrast, to compare um, with David Lynch's Dune whenever I do get around to reviewing it. Now, one problem with this DVD, though, is that it does not work at all on my Blu-ray player. For some reason, because my Blu-ray player is a newer Blu-ray player, this old DVD, the graphics or something on the menu just do not load, and it just doesn't work. And I have a couple ones, that other movies like that, that do that. This is not what it says it is. I should have looked in this case before I bought it, but really what's in here is the MTV movie beneath, which is a piece of shit. But I did get 
Benice, the actual Benice that's supposed to be in this case. And it actually looked really good from the trailer. True Story, which I really liked. That was a great thriller. Um, featured probably the best performances by Jonah Hill and James Franco. And it was my favorite film from 2015. One of my favorite films of 2015. Not my favorite film of 2015, but one of my favorites from that year. Easily. And I do recommend this if you like true crime films. I really do. Even if you don't like James Franco. The Bride with uh, Sting and Jennifer Beals. Top Dog with Chuck Norris. It was like a dollar for the Chuck Norris collection. Runaway Jury with John Cusack, Gene Hackman, Dustin Hoffman, and Rachel Wise. Now some of these... Like I said, some of these might be doubles I've shown in other videos. I it just it's been such a long time since I've done an update, so forgive me. Solo with Mario Van Peebles. It was pretty cheap, um, and I got it to give it another chance. I remember not being a big fan of this, but you know, for the collection. Uh, here we have a film starring Danny Glover and Bruce Greenwood that I thought looked interesting, called Donovan Zeko. Chillers with Anthony Perkins. This has four episodes of the show. The Day of Reckoning, Puzzles, Slowly, Slowly in the Wind, and Career Suicide. Haunter with Abigail Breslin. Actually looked pretty decent. The trailer looked interesting. This is an eight-pack with Disorganized Crime, Another Stakeout, Mafia, which I remember actually having some fun with, Taking Care of Business, Fatherhood, which is a piece of shit. Oscar, which, you know, I, I want to give that another shot. I really do want to give that another shot, actually. Um, forgive me for kind of stuttering there, because I was just like, yeah, Oscar. I was like, eh, I don't know. I wasn't the biggest fan of it. But, you know, I give it another shot for Stallone. The crew and Big Trouble. Mainly I got it because it was cheap, and I got it for another stakeout. Now I don't have, I, I can't seem to find stakeout, though. Everywhere I go, I can't find stakeout. I'd like to get it, but I can't find it. Tactical Forces, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Michael J. White. The Manhattan Project with John Lithgow and Christopher Collette. It's a pretty crazy plot. Christopher Collette ends up building a nuclear bomb. I like Christopher Collette as an actor ever since I saw him in Firstborn. So i would actually been curious about seeing that movie for a while. So I picked it up for cheap a while back. The Art of War of Wesley Snipes for the Wesley Snipes collection. The Exorcist, Exorcist 2, The Heretic. It was really cheap. It's for the Exorcist collection. This movie is awful. It's a piece of shit. But it's really cheap. And, you know, I was like, okay, all right. You know, I'll, I'll, give, it a, I'll give it a watch again if I decide to review the Exorcist films again. Which I don't know when that will ever be. But I wouldn't mind doing it because that's back when I had reviews that I had to split into multiple parts and, and I was using an older camera. Hatchet. The Unrated Cut. It's the only Hatchet film I have. I don't have any of the sequels. Habitat. Which is a weird ass movie. With Balthazar Getty and Alice Krieg. The board Queen herself. Disconnect. Which is, I thought it looked like an interesting movie with Jason Bateman. The Young Ones, Michael Shannon. All cheerleaders die. And they also get smacked around, apparently. All cheerleaders die. Looked interesting. Looked like me. It didn't look interesting. It just looked like a fun slasher. Alpha Alert. This definitely did look interesting to me. I like the idea behind it. Chemical Peel. Maniac remake, which is the last horror remake, the last remake period that I saw that I thought was any good. And that was in 2012. So it hasn't gotten any better since then. Madhouse. ATM. Devil in the Flesh with Rose McGowan. A goofy movie, because I'm a big fan of this. Haven't seen it in years. I'd love to watch it again. And I know I think I've probably shown that before in another update, but fuck it. 
Devil in the Flesh looks like it's a porno, but it really isn't. It's not a porno. It's 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 a horror movie. But there is some softcore porn elements in it, so I like, guess you could make an argument that it is one. The Adventures of Tintin. I actually grew up reading the Kim Tintin comics, so I've always been curious about seeing this. I just never got around to seeing it yet. But now I have it, so I can watch it sometime. Oscar, separately. Because why not? For the Stallone collection, so it's not on like some multi-disc thing. The Name of the Rose of Sean Connery. That was a great mystery film. I got it for pretty cheap. And this is kind of a semi-hard-to-find DVD. Silence of the Lambs, two-disc special edition, the collector's edition. I definitely wanted this because the other one I had didn't have all the... was not the two-disc, so this has a bunch of features on it. It's loaded with features. Kronos. Empire of the Ants. Boiling Point with Wesley Snipes. Again, mainly for the Wesley Snipes collection. I'm not the biggest fan of that film, but I got it for the collection. Oxygen with Adrian Bro Brody and uh, Mara Tierney. I saw the trailer for this. It looked interesting, so I'd also been trying to get a DVD of it. The Outer Limits, the reboot. This is my favorite version of The Outer Limits. I would love to get this full, this whole show on DVD or, uh, or actual full season sets, but it's kind of hard to find and and it's kind of expensive. Even the DVDRs are. Um, this has a bunch of episodes that are centered around uh, androids and robots. Um, so I think this this reboot is actually pretty underrated. I can't I can't even. I don't even know of anybody on YouTube that's even talking about this show. And I think that's really too bad because I think this surpasses the original by a mile. Uh, so this one, it has iRobot, The Hunt, Resurrection, The Camp, Glitch, and Small Friends. So it has a handful of episodes on it. Flatliners. I like this film a lot. I want to review this sometime. This DVD sucks, though. The picture quality is not very good. I'd like to get it on Blu-ray. Frighteners, fun movie, good good DVD. It's a bunch of features on it. These are ones I've had for a while. They were just in a stack, so I just didn't want to take them out. Yeah, I'm being lazy. Jeepers Creepers, the special edition, the two to special edition. That's all the features. I only had these films before as a two-pack. They didn't have any of the features, so I wanted to get these for the features. Jeepers Creepers 2, Special Edition. I'm fine with the DVDs of these movies because I like the first film. The director is a fucking scumbag. Uh, child molesting piece of shit. Victor Salva. Jeepers Creepers 2, I remember watching with my dad. But um, I don't. it's watchable at best. The Time Waster. It's not the best movie, though. Three Musketeers. Actually, my favorite version of The Three Musketeers. Uh, with Charlie Sheen, Kiefer Sutherland, Chris O'Donnell, Albert Platt, Tim Curry, and Rebecca De Mornay. I, I do. I agree. I agree with Jeffrey Lyons. It's, it's, it's loads of fun. We have Denzel Washington and Deja Vu. I haven't seen this film, but I know my friend Matt likes it, so I wanted to give it a shot. Plus, it's directed by Tony Scott. May he rest in peace. I still can't believe he's not no longer with us. Especially not the way that, you know, he left this world. Night Stalker, the complete series. This is the reboot. But I got it because this is not coming out on Blu-ray. Also, I am a huge fan of Cold Chat the Night Stalker. And whenever I do decide to do a Cold Chat the Night Stalker, you know... Might be a month because there's the two movies and then there's the series. Now nah, probably you know half a month or something, but I might de I'll definitely dedicate some time to Kolchak the Night Stalker to review the movie Kolchak the Night Stalker and uh, the Night Strangler. I'd love to get that double feature set, but it's out of print and extremely rare and expensive. Um, but I would like to get it someday. Um, and then of course the series, which only lasted one season, which was too bad. And then actually watch this and get my thoughts on this show. Um, 
But the, I just, I've never seen the reboot, but I remember, like, the intro just looked awful, and, but, yeah, it was like a dollar, so it's not like I paid that much for it. Dillinger, which is based on uh, the true crime story, you know, based on uh, the notorious criminal Dillinger. Um, I saw a trailer for it, I thought it looked, might be all right. 70s, you know, version of a gangster flick, so I wanted to give it a shot. Rumble in the Bronx with Jackie Chan. The self-destruction of the Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> this is an interesting watch nowadays, considering the Ultimate Warrior is considered to be this legendarily wonderful, great guy, according to, to the according to the WWE. And back, you know. Back before they made a kiss and made up, that documentary came out, and they were just, just slandering him hard. So it's, it's it's definitely an interesting contrast. Got this eight pack from Walmart a while back, mainly for a bunch of films that are on my wish list. But you know, it's got Bird on a Wire, The Cowboy Way, Stop or Mama Shoot, uh, Midnight Run, another Midnight Run, yeah, a sequel to Christmas McDonald. Renegades Gaze with Kiefer Sutherland, Lou Diamond Phillips, Bulletproof with Damon Wayans, and Adam Sandler, which I do actually like. I think that's pretty underrated. Gotcha with Anthony, Ed Anthony Edwards, and Bandit Goes Country. So there's like a bunch of movies on here. And the quality's not that bad, actually, because this isn't a Mill Creek thing. This is a universal uh, pack that has four movies on each disc. So... It's not Mill Creek Entertainment, so it's definitely better than them in that regard. The Rise and Fall of ECW. Heard good things about this. It was like a dollar. It was really cheap. Wesley Snipes and Drop Zone. Armageddon, the Criterion Collection. The picture quality isn't the best, but mainly I like the film, and it's for the, it's for the features commentary tracks and, and the featurettes and stuff like that. And if I want more features, I have the making of book that I can read that I have. Open Windows with uh, Elijah Wood, Sasha Gray, Stepfather 2, Make Room for Daddy, the special the Synapse Special Edition. Stepfather 3, as far as I know, is on a DVD, which is which I'm fine with. Throwing a few, uh, here's some VHS, Max Headroom, the original story. I believe this is the pilot. This is the pilot episode on VHS. The Lady Vanishes, which apparently is a remake of a Hitchcock film starring Elliot Gould, Sybil Shepard, and Angela Lansbury. I've never heard of this film until I picked this up. The Quest with uh, Henry Thomas and Tony Barry. This is the Anchor Bay release. Um, I have the original Charter release in storage in Michigan, but this is pretty cheap, and it's an Anchor, the Anchor Bay release. So the picture was a was is remastered a little bit. So... I don't even know if Anchor Bay even released this on DVD. It might be one of those that released on VHS but didn't release on DVD, but I'm not sure, though. I do not know for sure. I know there's a lot, so forgive me. This video is going to be however long it's going to be. Um, Sliders, Seasons 1 and 2. Now, this is a really surreal thing. Why? Because this, this I've never seen a case like this. This is extremely light. This is a very light case. Um, this has the first two seasons in it. And I've heard those are the only seasons worth the damn anyway, because the other seasons suck. And pretty much, they're contained. These discs are in this foam case. It's the wildest, craziest thing. I, I, I mean, and I remember seeing this set at, like, Costco years ago. I remember when these were, like, brand new. Um, but I never really thought that they were this light. So yeah, there's like 16 hours of sliders in this really, like, really light set. I mean, it's one of those things, like, you gotta hold it in your hands that 
really understand and really get the feel of, of how crazy it is to be holding two seasons, six discs, and there's barely any weight to it at all. Kickboxer collection. Probably shown this before in other videos. I thought, fuck it, why not? It was in the stack. Let's show it again. This has uh, the all five Kickboxer movies. Doesn't have the reboot, but I don't have any desire to get the reboot. At all, really. To me, it looks like shit. The Godfather DVD collection. Not the biggest fan of these movies, but it was cheap and I got it for the features. I know there's like a remaster version of these, but you know, I'm, I'm okay with that for right now. Chappelle Show Season 2. Love this show. This show was hilarious. I've been trying to get Season 2 for a while now. Now I finally have it. Um, I already have Season 1, but it's in a box somewhere. Amazing Story Season 1. Great show, underrated anthology show. Um, there's a lot of great episodes on this. I'm glad to have this set finally. Um, there's no season two though. There's no season two set released, so I'll have to make my own. But there were like there is like season two on Netflix or Amazon Prime, but I don't think there was one released overseas, but not in the U.S. But still, it's good to have season one. I'd love to I'd love to review this show sometime as well. Miami Vice season two to go along with my season one release. Folks, if you're a fan of this show and you've heard about this new Mill Creek Entertainment set that has all the all the show all the episodes in one set you're better off buying this DVD set or something cheap used somewhere. Like get the five seasons in the in these sets. Because these are much better quality, for one, than Mill Creek will be. They also aren't packaged as miserably as Mill Creek's are. So if you're a fan of the show, just go out and get some of these used sets. I got both of these like at Goodwill. Well, one of them I got a buybacks, but I got this one at Goodwill for like five bucks. So just look around. So I have the first two seasons of the show. With all the music and everything. And I, I only paid like 10 bucks total for them. This I'm really glad to have. I tried to get Ghosts. But I it just the price went way up. And I just couldn't afford it. Um, Unsolved Mysteries UFOs. So I'm really glad to have this. As a huge fan of the show. This is a set that had been eluding me for years. I had it in my hands at one time. When I was in Oklahoma. But I didn't get it. And it was affordable then, and so was Ghosts, and I should have bought Ghosts. I should have bought both of them, actually, because I had the money, but I just didn't do it. Now these sets are extremely rare, hard to find, expensive as hell, and I got this set brand fucking new for like 20 some bucks, so it was a great deal. Um, I have kind of a bootleg set that has like these discs burned on it, but it's not the same. The picture quality is not nowhere near the same. And I mean, come on, also, look at that. It's so cool. I mean, the logo and everything, I love it. It's great. We have a bunch of uh, WWE DVDs. I might have shown these before, but fuck it. Why? Just, they were in a stack. McMahon. Mainly I got it for the documentary and also for the matches with McMahon and Stone Cold. The Monday Night War. The Rock, The Epic Journey of Dwayne Johnson, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, I do like The Rock. The DVD set is fine with me because the Blu-ray has like, the extras suck. So it's a blue. there's a Blu-ray out, but the, it doesn't have any extra matches on it. It just has some, well it does, but it's like a tag team match against like R-Truth and somebody. So who cares? It's like a tag team match with The Rock and John Cena versus R-Truth and somebody. I don't give a shit. NWO The Revolution. Greatest Hell in the Cell matches. Hell in a Cell. It's a three disc set. Sting into the Light. My favorite wrestler. I'm really glad to have these DVD sets. I know the Blu rays have some extra stuff on them, but I'm fine with the DVDs for right now. 
Hulk Hogan's Unreleased Collector Series, because yes, I do like Hulk Hogan, despite his racist remarks. Now we have some Blu-rays. A whole nother stack. I told you folks, this is a huge one. This, this is a way, some of the, no, there might be some doubles here as well, but I said fuck it. Slaughterhouse Rock on Blu-ray. This is a Code Red release. I got this a while back. It was actually I got this this month because I read that it was coming out. And since it's a Code Red release, I wanted to get my hands on it when I could for an affordable price because these no are notorious for going out of print quickly and being hard hard to find. Now this this does have a great transfer, a great scan of the film. And it's got a, and I haven't watched any of the features yet. There's an interview with Mark Mothersbar, who's the which the, who's the front man at Devo, and an interview with the DP. But um, I am a fan of this film, so I'm really glad to actually have this on Blu-ray. And um, yeah, I, I do want to review this sometime. And when I do re-review the film, it will definitely be. I'll also talk about the Blu-ray. Jaws, Jaws 2, and Jaws 3, which is, there is a 3D version, but you can only watch it with a 3D TV and a 3D Blu-ray player. And they don't include the documentary from back in the day on here, for some reason, and I don't even know if there's even a trailer. So it's bare bones, and the quality is leaves a lot to be desired. But I'm glad to have it on Blu-ray though because I am a big fan of Jaws 3. Slugs, the era video release. This is the one from the UK. It has a few extra things on it that the US release does not have. The Back to the Future trilogy. The uh, 30th anniversary trilogy. It's an upgrade over my other set that I used to have, the 25th anniversary set. Um, it's like 20 bucks at buybacks. is a great deal. This has the bonus disc that had imports the features over from the original DVD sets, and um, yeah, it opens up like a book. So it's really cool. I'm a huge fan of this series. My favorite, probably. I don't know. Not my favorite trilogy, but well, I don't know. Might be. I really love these movies, and I would like to review. I would. I would like to do uh, new reviews of these because I think the other reviews I did weren't that great, and also the third one wasn't very good either because that I did that direct immediately after I get hit by a car. So that was just an audio review. So I would like to review these someday in more detail. Star Trek The Motion Picture Collection. This is uh, all the Star Trek, first six Star Trek films on Blu-ray. Um, the cover art are kind of shitty. Yeah, the cover art's kind of lame on these sets. They're really bland and boring and just blasé. Who cares? And I've, I think I've shown this before in another video, but... I was showing some box sets, so I thought... Why not again? I'm fine with having only these six on Blu-ray. And I know they're the director's cuts. They don't have the theatrical cuts of the motion picture. No, it has a theatrical cut of motion picture. And uh, I think it has a director's cut of Khan, but I don't know for sure. Um, but yeah, it, I think they're all the theatrical cuts, actually. But I'm okay with that. This is the last Blu-ray, actually, and that is Speed, the 20th anniversary. Now, to be honest, I've kind of warmed up to this cover art, because at first I was like, oh, that's kind of shit. But then then I was looking at their cover art for the DVD, the Five Star Collection, and this is better than that. That's for sure. Um, you know, you got the title. You have Keanu and, and, uh, and uh, Sandra. And you got the bus in the in, uh, on the bottom. I mean, you could do a worse photo. There's a worse Photoshop job you could do than this. It's better than the previous Blu-ray cover, which is just bland. Um, I don't know why they call it 20th anniversary though, because there's nothing new on this that wasn't on the other Blu-ray. Um, sadly, 
So you have a couple commentary tracks, some speed takedown game, and the trailer. And that's it. It doesn't port over the features from the 2 Special Edition. It doesn't have new features. It doesn't have new interviews with Keanu or Sandra. I think that's bullshit because this movie is a classic. It's one of the best fil action films of the 90s, if not of all time. And it deserves like a feature-length documentary, like a multiple, a ton of features. So what is up with this shit? I'm pretty sure Keanu would not mind talking about the movie if you just asked him. But um, I'm so glad to have it on Blu-ray though, because it is an upgrade over the over the DVD. Now I'm gonna try to go through these as faster, because this is almost already an hour. Death Trap with Christopher Reeve and Diane Cannon, and Michael Caine, Barbarians at the Gate, Free Willy Two, Jackie Chan's First Strike, Enter the Dragon. The Cell, DNA with Mark Dacascos, it's pretty much a VHS that's put on a DVD, Blind Date, there, yes there is another Blind Date, it's directed by Nico Mastriakis, and it actually stars Kirstie Alley. This is the actual Beneath, the one that I wanted, as you can see it's actually in the case. Not something else. It's not the other beneath. But uh, hey, I have the other beneath, so if I decide to ever review beneath, I can review the other beneath. Stigmata. Saw the trailer for this again. It actually looked really good, actually. And I might already have this on DVD, but I, I didn't remember, and it was only a dollar. Serial Mom. Because the trailer looked hilarious, and the clips that I've seen made me crack my... Really made me laugh a lot. So... Wanted to get that. Plus, that has a lot of features on it. Drink break real quick. Ah. Surrogates. I saw this a while back. I actually liked it. So, I'm um, actually glad to have that. Aswang. Also known as The Unearthing. This is one of those films that was on Fangoria's list of 101 most unheralded horror movies. I have the cut version known as the unearthing on VHS, but I don't I did not have the uncut version. Now I do. Idiocracy, I kind of live in there in that world right now. Snapped. True crime show. Small soldiers. Really, honestly, do want to revisit this someday and review it. The Mothman Prophecies, the elusive two-disc special edition I've been trying to find for a long time. I got it for really cheap at FYE. So I'm really glad to have that. This is honestly really underrated. The cover art is shitty, to be honest. The bare bone, the, the release that doesn't have the features had more had a better cover. But either way, this is a really underrated film. Star Chaser, The Legend of Orin. Got that for $1.49, and this is an out-of-print DVD. I've reviewed this before, but I wouldn't mind watching it and reviewing it again. I think I've gotten better at reviewing films versus my reviews from two or three years ago. Immortal. Nightmare at Bitter Creek with Lindsay Wagner and Tom Skerritt. Lost Voyage with Judd Nelson and Lance Henriksen, Year of the Gun, Weaponized, Ghost, Sun, Dead Alive, fucking awesome movie. This is actually something I didn't get recently, but this is something I bought when Circuit City went out of business in Oklahoma City. And I got it for cheap then, and now it's out of print, it's hard to find, and the, even the DVD will fetch some high numbers. It's really too bad because this film deserves to be seen by more people. Why is this not on Blu-ray? I'm not talking about the out of print Lionsgate Blu-ray that's just got no features or anything. Why isn't this on like some jam-packed feature 
laden blu-ray from scream factory or arrow video what the hell is going on here is peter jackson the one behind this why is dead alive aka brain dead not on some special edition blu-ray like this is one of the best zombie films ever this needs to be on blu-ray and uh, one that anybody can get their hands on and this dvd isn't the best either it's the uncut version the unrated version but it says widescreen but it looks like it's a full screen print at least to me that's just cropped the poison ivy trilogy i know there's another one but you know i'll find it somewhere if i decide to review those movies fugitive double feature i got it for u.s marshals because i didn't have that the halloween tree yeah and i got this at the pawn shop for a dollar and this is one of those Warner Archive releases. You're not going to get this for a dollar anywhere else. So that was a really good deal. Uh, Superman, Batman, Public Enemies. This will probably be ten times better than Batman vs. Superman. I'm already calling it. And I haven't even seen the film yet. Goof Troop Volume 1. I actually remember watching this show when I was a kid. So I'm looking forward to watching some of these episodes. According to Occam's Razor, there's a dollar. I like unexplained stuff. This looks like a batshit weird movie. I've read reviews about it too. That's just fucking weird. Uh, it's like a reality but not reality kind of documentary, and it's uh, directed and put together by the director of Communion, uh, Philippe Mora. Jumper, because I remember this trailer. I remember this idea. Excuse me. I remember this idea. And I was always curious about this movie, but I never got around to seeing it. It's probably a piece of shit, but I saw the trailer again recently, and it still does interest me. So I'll, I'll give it a watch sometime. Hardcore Henry, one of my probably my second favorite film of the year. Love it. Glad to have this on DVD. I wouldn't mind getting on Blu-ray sometime, but I'll, I'll I'll be fine with the DVD for right now. Urban Justice with Steven Seagal for the Seagal Collection. I'm not even going to bother buying his shitty films. I'm just going to... I turned down a four-pack that had, like, Today You Die and, like, Out of Reach and, like, I think it was Attack Force. And there was another, like, shitty one. They were all shitty Seagal films. And I could have gotten them, like, for a dollar because they were all in, like, a four-pack. But I was like, no, nah, fuck that. No, I'll just get Urban Justice instead. Prizzy's Honor. With Jet Nicholson and Kathleen Turner. Wildcats with Goldie Hawn. My favorite. Probably my favorite film of hers. Where she's the lead. Really enjoyed that movie. Against All Odds. Always a Steven, a Steven Spielberg film that nobody talks about. That's been completely forgotten about. It's probably the most forgotten about Spielberg film. And I haven't seen it. So from the trailers... It didn't look that bad. I like Richard Dreyfuss. I like John Goodman. I like Holly Hunter. It's like a version of Ghost. When the Bow Breaks. Ali Walker and Martin Sheen and Ron Perlman. Yes. I did get it. And I only paid a dollar for it. You know what? That was fine with me. Because I don't hate this movie. Even when the second time around I saw it, I was like, eh, it's, it's okay. You know, it's maybe it's below average, but... Or it's average. I never hated this film. I thought it was interesting. I liked the first. I liked the first half by Josh Trank. The other stuff is kind of a mess. But even that, there's some stuff in the Fox, you know, cut that I didn't mind either. I like this more than Rise of Silver Surfer. I think this beats the shit out of Rise of Silver Surfer. And I do not think this is one of the worst Marvel movies ever made. So go ahead and sue me, you know, get mad at me, do whatever the hell you want, I don't care, but I still don't mind this movie, and I still don't think it is one of the worst movies of all time. I'd rather be honest than lie. Deep Impact, which is a pretty good movie. I prefer Armageddon, but it's above average. You Don't Know Jack with Al Pacino, based on the true story of Jack Kevorkian, Dr. Death. Death from Above, it's probably a piece of shit, but if I want if I do some wrestling wrestling wrestlers turned actors marathon, I'll still be on it. Dead or Alive. 
to be honest, this look, the trailer didn't look that bad, and I don't know. I mean, it's a dumb movie. It looks like a dumb action movie. It's probably was going to be a big dumb action movie. I mean, it's not like the game series this is based on is some really well thought out and deep video game series. Naked Space, Leslie Nielsen, look. This looks really interesting. This is an entire film that's shot on surveillance cameras. Which really got me curious. Epoch. The Objective. Trailer actually looked pretty good. And uh, this has got some decent reviews. And it's from... Uh, they say it's one from one of the guys who worked on Blair Witch Project. So the co-creator of the Blair Witch Project. Although it could be really shitty, but you know, it didn't look that bad to me. And we're here we have This is it. These are the last DVDs for this update that's clocking in at almost an hour. Forgive me, there's just so much. So much, so much in this. Saw the uncut edition, which is a two-year special edition. Saw two, the un-special edition, which includes the unrated cut, an alternate cut. And I, I know I've heard people say, oh, like the alternate cuts aren't as good as the unrated cuts or whatever. And I'm like, I, I you know, or, or they're not as good as the original cuts. And I'm like, I don't really care. I mean, I got these for... For the Saw Collection, because I do want to, I actually do want to watch these and, and review this series sometime, so maybe this October or something. Because I was thinking about getting the box set, but none of them had any features, so I, I, I just, these ones have features, this is a two disc, and this one has uh, features on it as well, so it's Saw 2, um, we got Saw 4, and Saw 5. And saw six and saw the final chapter. And I think there's like a eighth saw film coming out next year anyway. And the only one I need now is saw three. And, and I keep seeing it, I, I only see the full screen version or I see it on Blu ray. And I don't want to get just like one saw film on Blu ray and then all the rest of them are on DVD. So I, I you know, I'm going to complete the collection by the time I do the review, review the series, but I'm just not there yet, but I'm almost there because I got these pretty, all these in one day. So I got, I guess I got six out of the seven saw films in one day. It's a pretty good haul amongst all the other stuff, which all this wasn't from one day though, by the way. But anyway, folks, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it's a long one, but I just had a lot to show you guys. So, um, anyway, I hope you all have a happy new year and, um, stay tuned for Weller, Weller month. Yeah, Weller Uary. Uh, the first review of Weller Uary will be up on Sunday of any, any way, whatever you want or any way you want it or something. It's, any which way you can. Now it's it's some really obscure movie that Weller has a bit part in, but it's one of his first semi big roles. Um, don't expect a very long review of that though, because I I'm, I don't think I'll have much to say. But I'll still do the video because it's for Weller you worry. But anyway, um, and also I'll, I'll t let you guys know ahead of time. There are a few reviews for some films for 2016 that I'll be watching and recording reviews for um, during Weller Urary that I will post. So Weller Urary will still be going on, but like I'll take a, few, a break here and there and then post a couple reviews from some movies I've been wanting to see from 2016 that I haven't gotten around to seeing yet, like Nerve, uh, The Shallows, uh, The Good Neighbor, um... There's, other, there's some other films too, like The Neon Demon, uh, 
it was like a, the accountants with Ben Affleck. I also wanted to, there's another oh, oh yeah Civil War. So there's so there's so there'll be some reviews of that those movies interspersed in between Peter Weller movie reviews. Um, and I also have a episode of OCB tries that I'll post sometime later. And no, I don't have any plans of doing a best and worst of 2016 video. I thought about it, but then I'm like, I don't want to do it in January. So, like, I could, I guess. Let me know if you want to see that. If you want to see my best and worst of video of, uh, from 20, 2016 in 2017, please let me know in the comments down below. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys later. See ya.